Monday, January 9th, 2023, and this is a meeting of the South Pro Planning Board. The Planning Board is now in session. And the first item on the agenda is a public hearing for 200 Turnpike Road. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed first item on the agenda is um, Master Plan Implementation Committee briefing. My apologies, Mr. Murray. Okay, I'll just give it just a quick um, update. Um, so, the Master Plan Implementation Committee um, has met um, and formed, formed, and then met. Consists of um, five members. Um, Lisa Braccio is the chair. I am the clerk, and other members: Judith Watson, Kat McKee, and Bill Warren. The five of us. We've met twice now in September and December. Um, the, I think one of the more interesting things to know is that um, if, um, if you look at the master plan, the way that the goals are written by chapter, that's been somewhat reorganized into what um, we're calling affinity groups. And there is an appointee for each of the five members on these affinity groups. So for example, um, there's an affinity group called Local Government Strategy and Planning, and that is uh, comprised of Community Preservation Committee, Pedestrian and Bicycling Committee, and Select Board. And so Lisa Braccio is the appointee for that group. And if you don't mind, I'll just talk about the other ones. Um, there's a Finance and Technology Affinity Group, and that's led by Bill Warren. And that's going to be Capital Planning Committee, Public Works Planning Board, and Technology Department. Um, there's a Facilities Sustainability and Resiliency Group that's led by Lisa Braccio, and that is the Emergency Planning Committee Facilities Southboro Emergency Management Agency and Southboro Sustainability Committee. There's an Environment and Natural Resources Group that's led by Kat McKee as the contact, and that is Conservation Commission, Open Space Preservation Commission, Southboro Trails Committee, Department of Public Works, and the Golf Course. Committee. Um, I'm assigned to the Commercial and Residential Development. That's Planning Board, Economic Development Committee, South for Housing, Opportunity Partnership, Shop C. And the last is Educational and Recreational. Judith Watson has that group. And that's Historical Commission, Recreation Commission, and School Committee. So that covers all of the boards, committees, and departments that have goals. And the uh, boards, um, the um, Master Plan Implementation Committee is looking to meet with each of our assigned committees or boards um, twice a year. And um, the current plan is to report back to this board quarterly. Oh, nice. 
Nice. Does that sound that too much? Oh, sounds good. <laughs> that sounds great. Is okay. there a place? Uh, is there um, are those affinity groups identified on the web page for the committee? So we're actually meeting uh, this week. I know that um, they're they're in the minutes, and um, Judith was um, looking to set up a master plan and implementation uh, website. But I don't have an update yet whether it's set up yet. But it will they'll they'll be on there. There is a page on oh. planning. Oh, okay. it's just that you won't be able to log in, manipulate, and put things there. Okay, because it um, the plan is for that page or a page to become a public page. So as the different boards and committees report in on their goals, that we can keep that um, site updated. Yeah, so people can go on and see how the different groups are doing. And I know that Judith had asked. Oh, look at that! I didn't even know. There's some information from us about maybe um, coordinating where the information is so that it's not all over the place, but in appropriate places. So that's in the queue somewhere. That Okay, like uh, someone would go on to the planning board to get to this. Well, no, site. it's a committee. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a committee, so you, it, you're listed all by yourself. Okay, good. I, I know that it's been, um, there's, there's been some discussion about that, so I think we're going to learn more about it on Wednesday. Yeah, ladies and touch to make sure people can find their way. Like, like, yeah. If one gets updated, if it's somewhere else, they have to update all of it. If something changes, so I'm kind of going to that. Good. Thanks. That's great. So all the hard work that the master planning committee put in will come to fruition. Yes, I think there's already some goals that are accomplished from what I heard. Yeah, which is nice. Awesome. Thank yeah. you very much. I just want to point out to that. Jesse Stein is here via Zoom and Marnie is in the absence. Make a motion we accept the meeting minutes from November 21st, 2022 as written. Second. Okay. We'll hold up. Have you read any of them? We'll hold on. I read them. I'm good. Hmm? I'm good with it. Okay. Jesse, have you read them all? I seconded the motion. Okay, no, all right. So, uh, which one? That was November, yeah, 21st. Do we have a motion and a second? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> That's my line. <laughs> Bells, yes. Stein, yes. Demiri, yes. Latrell of I make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from December 12th, 2022, as written. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, Latrell of staying. Mills, yes. Demiria, yes. Uh, December 12th, I'm going to abstain. Okay. I make a motion we accept the meeting minutes from December 16th, 2022. That's written. Did we have a three member vote on that last minute? No. Two. two. Only two. So we have to. So I would think to do them again. Have to, okay, yeah. we're going to have to wait on the next one, too. He said, I don't think Jesse was the next one. Jesse, are you prepared to? He wasn't at the 16th okay. meeting. Oh, okay. so we'll hold that one, too. Okay. All right. Well, now it's 7 10. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Bike. <laughs> so 710, we have a public hearing for 200 certified growth. And Serena can you learn it today? Yeah. So um, for 200 certified growth, uh, we received an extension request. Um, the applicant um, on January 3rd to um, continue the public hearing to January 23rd, our next, the planning board's next regularly scheduled meeting with a uh, deadline for action on um, January 27th. There is a form that was signed 
by the applicant team. Um, so that's the first order. And then um, they requested to continue uh, without testimony, but just one quick update that we are in receipt of a letter from the DCR who's reviewed the most recent submission to make it over three dated December 15th, 2022. Um, for the record, uh, let me see what else we can see. We did receive some comments from the Southboro Accessibility Public Accessibility Committee. Um, and I think it was predominantly referring to the interior plans of the building. So that would be the building department when they um, go with their building, when they go for their building permit. We did receive uh, Fuss and O'Neill review comments on Friday, January 6th, which were forwarded to the applicant team. And um, because they had just received them, they didn't have an opportunity to respond. And that's why they're asking for continuance. Uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion. We can uh, grant the request for a continuation and extension of the public hearing for 200 Turnpike Road, major site plan approval, and special permit lower impact development. Um, the hearing shall be continued to January 23rd, 2023 at 7.10 p.m. Uh, and the time that the board shall have to reach a decision on the matter shall be extended to January 27th, 2023, as requested by the applicant. Is there Second. a second? Very good. I have a motion and a second in the discussion. All in favor, with Carl, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Demiria, yes. Madam Chair, I make a motion we continue the public hearings for um, 200 Turnpike Road snow removal landscaping contractor facility, major site plan approval and special permit for LID to uh, January 23rd, 2023 at 7, 10 p.m. Second. Very good, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, Luttrell, yes. Mills, yes. Diane, yes. Harry, yes. One quick question. Um, I think we wanted to. Did you say seven ten? Is it too late to say seven or five? Or can we fill the first ten minutes of meeting minutes? We can do. I think that we're going to have this uh, implementation committee this update as a standing item. Yeah, like we did with the. Okay, so that so we can stay with the seven ten. The thing is that um, we advertised. I just want to make sure that there's not a conflict. So then I'm sorry. So we have um thank you. It's going off the request there. Yes, thank you. Yes. So uh I just want to make sure that so we'll have um 325 current height down the earlier at 715. And we will also have the downtown district by law at 705. Okay, so that makes sense. So we'll have um, 705, we'll have the downtown district one. That's what you put here, right, Colleen? 705. Yes. Yeah, seven. Yeah. And then we have 710, which is the one you just continued. Yeah. And then 715 will continue the sound value. So that makes sense. And then the other Oh. oh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. On top of that, we have Phoenix Roads. I don't have the, oh, yeah, I did the tree by law at 725 and the Phoenix Roads at 730. In one of there. And then maybe with the um, February 26th, February 6th meeting, we can just reorg a little bit because we have all the warning. After the public meeting, after any project public meeting. 
And just and just so everybody's aware, um, we're going to have a conservation authority with more water. Yep. Um, bylaws are. Uh, I think they're taking it out of the bylaw. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you, it's going to be one of, another one of those public hearings on the sixth. Right. Yeah, just so we're aware. So when the time he comes, we'll have two additional months in conservation. So we're good with 200 per yeah. 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 Sorry about that confusion. I just knew in my head we had a, uh, one of them that would be changed. No, it works. So it's good to make sure we're good and we can still work. Yeah. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is session item 154 to 156. North Girl Road. Welcome. Happy New Year. Thank you. Amen. So planning board members, so you know there's a uh, loving by 17 piece of the pamphlet that you gave us from Cosmo. Um it would be near to see that one. Okay, there's a stuff on for the record I'm Michael Quinn and this is our attorney, Jonathan Silverstein. Good as you are aware, the last time we were here in November, I believe it was, we were seeking a temporary certificate of occupancy. It's been quite some time since the building has been completed, except for landscaping and some engineering issues. We are again seeking the temporary certificate of occupancy. Uh, we're going to post a bond for the remaining plants that need to be installed. Um, we're not going anywhere. It's been a year and a half since the plumbing has been signed off, the electrical, board of health with a septic system, uh, public works, fire departments, the building sits there. Every couple of weeks we have to go there and clean out the parking lot because it's trash and vandals have dumped glass there or whatever. And the building should be occupied. So again, I'm asking for a temporary certificate of occupancy so we can, you know, move into the building as it was intended to when we built it. Um, and if I could just jump in for uh, a minute. Again, I'm Jonathan Silverstein. Um, uh, I did have a chance to talk to Jay Talman, uh, town council on my drive out today. Uh, and we discussed the idea of um, a surety agreement. And obviously we just saw the Fussing O'Neill report today. My reading of it is that Essentially, they've said everything looks fine to them. There's some additional calculations they want, primarily, I think, with respect to the outlets in the rain gardens. I mean, if you've been out there, those rain gardens are pretty extensive and they've never, as I understand, they've never had more than an inch of standing water. So, um, you know, and, and obviously that's not going to change whether or not the building's occupied. So, what he and I discussed, and he said um, I could represent to you that he was comfortable with the concept of having a surety agreement that covers the landscaping now. Obviously, Peter Bemis hasn't had a chance to look at the Fuckin O'Neill report that came in this morning and to provide the additional calculations in the very, very unlikely event that those additional calculations reveal that there's some additional work that needs to be done, then the surety agreement would provide that the amount of the bond could be increased at that point. Uh, and Jay said that he'd be comfortable with that. Um, uh, obviously it's the, the board's call, but um, as Michael has indicated, you know, the hope is none of this, uh, none of what's outstanding affects the, health or safety uh, of occupants of the building or of the public um, and occup occupation of the building is only gonna uh, help maintain the building, uh, increase taxes for the town. Uh, and obviously it, the carrying costs have been pretty significant to my client over the, the past year and a half. And so we would ask that the board approve of a surety to cover the landscaping. I'll work on language with Jay um to cover the unlikely eventuality of additional bond being required if the drainage calculations merit um in the opinion of Fuss and O'Neill um and uh in that way we could start getting the building occupied within a lot of perspective 
prospective occupants of the tenants um, who have had agreements in place to, to occupy it. And, and they've obviously walked away over the course of the past year and a half. So uh, it's a pretty big financial burden for, for the developer. And uh, if there's any way we could um, get a bond agreement in place tonight, it would be very much appreciated. Mr. Mills, any question? Uh, well, I guess is it uh, what Fusson O'Neill said? Is it just the rain garden calculations? Is that the last piece? In Fusson O'Neill, your new comment letter dated January 6, 2023, um, in which they reviewed the as the, you know, part of that was the as the plan from August 2020. 2022 and um, some revised information on the drainage cuts from November 21st. Um, their response was that um, stormwater calculations provided within the letter dated November 21st, 2022, which is the most recent additional information based on a prior review. Does not provide the full revised calculations. Calculations provided only show the changes made to the pond. And I believe the references to the one pond that was built smaller than what was required on the approved plan. So it says um, stormwater calculations provided within the letter dated November 21st, 2023, does not provide the full revised calculations. The calculations provided only show the changes made to the pond. In order to determine if these changes are significant enough to affect the calculations, Fully revised calculations shall be provided. Stormwater calculations provided with the letter dated August 24, 2022, have not been revised with the elevations provided on the ASPO plan. The calculations must be revised to reflect the elevation shown on the ASPO plan. So, it's my understanding the ASPO plans are based on Peter Beeman's point out and his engineer surveying and assuring what was actually built there. And those plans were then provided to planning and also to Plus and O'Neill in order to um, review the stormwater calculations that Peter B. was also provided. And when he provided those, um, previously there was a review letter, and in that um, there were discrepancies that um, were across the board. In other words, each piece of or part of the calculation had error in um, That was one of the things. So I mean, there was a concern that those hearing it, that could be a hearing where there's error that could impact um, whether the system functions as a whole. Um, so Peter then, based on that, we knew that from Preston O'Neill initially, they, Peter Beans provided um, an updated set of calculations that just in the time. So, um, it was my understanding that, you know, full stormwater accounts were being provided in order to show that the system performs the way the approved plan expected them to perform. With the rain garden, number five, I think it is, that was built um, smaller than what was required. That's the one on the western corner? Yes. Yeah. Right. The one that couldn't be moved because of the rock or something. Right? This, this legend is a high pressure gas main that services right. Ken's Foods in Marlboro. Yeah. Yeah. Just so making sure I knew the one. <laughs> I recall the conversation. Okay. So, and then um, from the last meeting, too, there were some other things. There were like minor things that I think those were kind of like they all got remedied. So, those things, um, for the most part, Buffalo and O'Neill said. They didn't really affect anything significantly, and that was up to the planning board's discretion. Um, as far as like, um, let's see, the landscape island, um, let's see here, the parking area at the building connected. So, one of the things would be approved site plan for six landscape islands with approximately the same dimension as the parking area, nine and a half by 18, and the landscape island detail requiring a minimum elevation of six inches below the top depth, but with a three to one size. Um, constructed landscape islands, and those shown on the asphalt plan, are smaller islands, nine by six and a half, at about the same elevation as the asphalt. So, 
So plus no near belief that the shortening of the island does not affect the initial design intent. The increase in impervious is minimal and should have not should not have an effect on the stormwater. It's at the discretion of the planning board to approve it or deny this change. Um, Okay, um, parking area at building connector. Um, in review of the ASBO plan, plus and does not believe this would affect the intent of the approved design and should not raise an issue. And that was the concrete sidewalk and asphalt section of the parking area at the building connector were built shorter to the east than shown on the approved site plan. EDC acknowledged that the approved site plan did provide minimal separation from the fire hiding to the Siamese building connection and a 10 foot addition. And 10 foot additional was provided as a prudent measure can't see this in the for an imposed improved fire personnel acceptance. So they didn't have a problem with the, you know, when they, uh, um, the change in length of the sidewalk. Guardrail, there was a piece of guardrail um, that wasn't as shown on the plan. The guardrail was not present at the initial survey, however, it has been located and included on the ad bill by ADC. Um, actual site limits needing guide road protection stock on the adjacent site grade on the longer applied guide road protection extending the guide into the public way does not appear to be either necessary or prudent. And again, plus O'Neill said does not believe this will affect the intent of the free design and should not raise issues at the discretion of the planning board. Then um, fire hydrants, um, some of the locations of the fire hydrants were changed and EDC, which is um, Engineering design consultants, uh, represented by Peter Beeman, acknowledged that the approved site plan did not include a section of sidewalk that was eliminated at this. So, as this is associated with the position of the fire hydrant that was set back 10 feet additional at signing building connection to include fire access at Sprinkler Road and Building. And Fusner O'Neill indicated that in review of the ad built plan, Fusner O'Neill does not believe this will affect the intent of the approved design. Not raising issues with that the discretion of the planning board. Uh, then there was um, the soil absorption area. There was a comment on that. Um, okay, I mean, there's nothing significant. Those were the those were the uh, handful of items yeah. that they said wasn't significant, but they still had um, concern that the water niche system functioned um, as. And you said you talked to Tallerman on the way over here tonight. Is that right? Yes. So, Karina, you didn't have any confirmation of that conversation. No, I did not get a recap or information. And usually, it was not really on the I worked with him for about 15 years. So, um, I don't think you guys all seem to know each other. Yeah, we do. Um, so, obviously, uh, I. Uh, I would acknowledge that if the board is okay with that in concept, that you, it'd be a it would be something on him signing. Exactly. Okay. In fact, he offered to take the first cut at the um, at the charity agreement, which I'm fine with. Um, you know, and I, I just want to reiterate: I, of course, the board's entitled to, uh, and Fuss and O'Neill are entitled to a full set of drainage calculations. I think we have the benefit here of. The building and the parking, the, the impervious area, having been there for a pretty significant period of time through some pretty significant rain events, and if there was going to be a big problem, then I think we would know it by now. I'm not saying we don't we don't wrap it all up. Of course we do. I'm just saying I don't think it necessitates keeping the building vacant any longer. So then the the plantings. I know we can't plant anything now, but. These are all in now, is that correct? Or these are proposed to? The majority of those are installed. We have a, a, a small order coming in the spring. We've already ordered them. The landscaper has been hired and we expect them to be done in probably by the, certainly by the end of April. We're good with these. Yes. And I have a lot of questions. Be, be, okay. Before we plant them, you know, I'll come in again like I did before and sit down with Mimi and Karina and uh, Show them exactly what we're going to do and then we'll start. Mike is also, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you're working on giving us, providing us invoices of all. The yeah, I, I will give you all the invoices. So many of those, in, you know, many of those invoices 
were plants that were planted and then removed. Yeah. And you can identify those, right? yeah. and then you'll have the invoices of the plants that have, are, are, have been installed. Yeah. And are correct. In so yeah. we know, okay, so uh, on a side note, um, th that list you have is provided by the landscape architect. This right. Okay, so he's heavily involved, and we want to keep him that way. Um, when he, when I sat down with him in the fall, he looked at me and said, "Are you crazy?" And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "You're paying three and four times what these plants are worth." And I said, well, that's what we have to do right now because we contracted with them to that's the only ones we could get. Since then, plants are like lumber, they've come way, way down. Uh, six or eight months ago, we paid eight dollars for a two by four, eight foot two by four. Now we're paying three thirty-nine, expected to be two ninety-nine in a couple of weeks. Plants are the same thing. So the prices we paid were, you know ridiculously high, but we had to do it in order, to, I thought, to show good faith and that we wanted to uh, remove the plants that weren't native species and install the native species. I have no more questions. Mr. Stein. Uh, thank you. Um, did the proponent acknowledge the um, sign would be re relocated for uh, Lesson O'Neill's request. I called Corrine a few weeks ago and told her we removed the sign completely. The sign is gone. So there's no sign, so we're just talking about landscaping and the um, drainage calculations. Is correct. that correct? Yes. Um, you're going to reinstall the sign. Right? You said you were going to reinstall. Yeah, the we'll sign. do that in the spring. We'll do it in accordance with the sign permit. The sign permit calls for location. That's where we're going to install it. Okay, so that's different. This is where it gets stuff like this gets confused. You just said that there was no sign. That's correct. There's no sign. So, but then. But then you can you go on to say you're going to reinstall the sign. Is it where is the sign going to be put in the correct place, or where yeah, is it going to be put? We have a permit that calls for the sign to be located at the entrance. We had it in the middle, middle of the building. It's very specific where the sign permit identifies the location of the sign. And the permit was issued by the town of Southborough. Okay. Is there anything else that we should be taking, worried about here? Not that I'm aware of. Karina? Oh, you're asking me? Oh, yeah. Um, because it's the, 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 things just seem to keep changing. Well, um, the issue with the sign came up in between meetings. Um, the sign uh, was mentioned in a prior Clefton O'Neill review letter that said that it was partially. I think partially on town right away. Yeah. So the proponent has a, a license from the select board to have the drainage via the rain garden partially on town property, um, which was probably you know put in place. Um, but when the proponent found that the sign was um, off the private property, uh, they decided to remove it, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Okay. And then um, when I asked, what you're going to do with it? You replied. You told me that you were going to reinstall it on the property of, the, you know, the private property uh, right. at a location. Is that different from what was on the approved plan, though? No, we're going we're gonna to stick to the approved plan. Okay, so they had installed the sign in a different place than the approved plan, and now you're moving it to the right place that was approved originally. Correct. So I'm going to recommend that the bonding take into consideration that we're going to need a reinspection to verify that the sign is in the correct place after it's been reinstalled. And as far as the drainage calculations go, Karina, I think that you had said Peter Bemis was the engineer. I don't believe Peter Bemis is the engineer of record on the plans. The engineer who was part of design was Stamsky and McNary at the time of permitting um, prior to this current owner. Um, when it came time to do the ASBO, um, it's my understanding that 
uh, Roger Kane, the owner of the property, hired uh, engineering design consultant, Peter Bina, who uh, prepared the as built. And well, Peter Peter Bemis is the consultant, but I don't believe he's going to be the engineer of record. No, it's it's Walter Lemansky. Okay, I think that we should just be hundred percent clear about who is the actual engineer of record. Yes, but he it, he represents engineering design consultants. In okay. other words, he's he's either subbed or he consults to engineering design consultants. But he's the engineer who stamps the plan. For in other words, he's the engineer design. of record, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, well, what is the amount? Um, so we're talking about the drainage calculations stamp, you know, completed and stamped by a, a licensed engineer, an actual engineer. Um, the sign being put in, in the correct place and the landscaping. I mean, that's a pretty comprehensive. I'm kind of on the fence personally about whether or not this meets um, bonding and surety in my mind, but um, I'm open to listen. Thank you. Mr. Murray? I don't have any questions right now. Okay. Um, so my concern on the drainage is that that's a buffer that road. And so we have to be very careful that that, that drainage system works correctly. Buses go to Algonquin South Road that way. Um, and all other traffic, but very sensitive to the fact that it's a bus. Um, and as far as I have no problem of bonding what's remaining in the landscaping, but I don't know what that is. Um, we had site one invoices, but the, the plants on the plan weren't on those invoices. I've been over there. I can't say that the plants that or on the plans have been planted. And the rain gardens have all been mowed. I don't know how shrubs come back after they've been mowed. So if you remember the meeting we had here with Steve Kostos, the landscape architect, he recommended that day that we mow everything down and the plants that we were, we spent, I think at 15 to $20,000 on, a few days later, were installed in accordance with the plan. When we finish in the spring, we're going to provide you with an as-built plan. It says they're installed in accordance with the plan, and then you're going to take that plan and submit it to Fuss and O'Neill, and they're going to come out and they're going to either say yay or nay. We're going to, we believe they're going to say yay because we're doing it exactly according to the plan. So, but how would how do I know now what to use as for bonding? Because I don't know what's in there. So, is, so he has on that on that document what's what's installed, what's not installed. Right, but how, I don't have the invoices, so I have nothing to back that up. And, has, and there are some things that are left blank here, like um, he's installed costs for the remaining items. I mean, we're not going to bond something that's already completed, right? He's even has a completed prospect, completed prospect. Steve, it has, it's, um, it's Steve Cosmo. Um, he's a licensed landscape architect. Right? Yes, he is. He's the one that generated this. Yes. Maybe he would be willing to attest um, a list of what he says is installed on the site. Just an idea. Sure. I think he would likely, um, you know, he says this is what's installed and I test it and he stamps it and writes a letter certifying that this is what I believe is, uh, this is what is installed. 
and you can't do light into it. So you can see it direct in the landscape, a way to put right. Because usually that's what we require. Sure. Um, when uh, we just done it on another project as well, that it, it was work remaining, but the work that was done, that landscape architect provided an affidavit or a certifying letter that said what has been installed today is in compliance with the approved plan and identified any deviations. Yeah. So if he has a last when he looks through the whole thing one more time and finds any deviations and follows out and then say that that would be included in the yeah maybe we can make that part of the show be agreement. Okay. So it's it's not, it's, it's planning yeah. board's decision but I think I mean, I'm not a plant specialist so I'm gonna just defer to him. You know, that day we met, there was one or two items. He, he only he had a six foot instead of an eight foot. And we discussed, you know, in the future, if there's going to be a change, we'll be right here asking permission before we do it. We're not going to make a mistake again. So there are some things on there, like the American Holly, it says quantity planted zero, but there's nothing under what's to be planted or there's no amount. That, that wasn't added to the bond. So if you look under shrub, right? It's one, two, three, four. It's the sixth one down under shrub, right? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, American Holly. So what's happening with that? I'll have to ask about, I don't know. Um, was Fasson on the last to take a look at the estimate and? No. Yeah. Okay. I, I can ask him tomorrow and get back to you on that. And we could, we, we could find if the board wanted to pick some reasonable amount to just add on for that. I, I don't know what the explanation is, but. Um, And I, so I've been over there several times and I saw no evidence that these, that this was planted as the plants. There was a lot of crabgrass. It wasn't little blue stem in Pennsylvania I, I, sedge. And, my hat breaks to, to hear you say that because the amount of money we spent on those plants, and I, I know what it looks like. I know what it looked like before he mowed it. It looked like it was a thriving forest. And then after we mowed it, and we spent fifteen to twenty thousand dollars installing the stuff. It doesn't it doesn't didn't change, but everything is there. I'll, I'll I can guarantee that, and and I'm sure he will too because he was there when he, when everything was being planted. So so we mowed the whole. So the last time I was there was I think just mowed it was in the fall. I think after the last time you were there, and there was shrubs that were mowed so there was like little sticks sticking up to the ground are those going to be replaced because you mow a shrub i don't think it's going to come back some of those things come back some don't i don't really i never mow my shrubs but, but they're not shrubs there's a, a so many different varieties of grasses and well grasses aren't wooden sticks i i, I hear you. again i'm not a landscape architect so i'm gonna have to leave that up to him but so just to be clear, after it was mowed, you're saying about twenty thousand dollars worth of plants was installed. Well, that's correct. That's correct. And there, there are trees and shrubs that are bald sitting in the parking lot. Those are the ones that we took out that are non-native. Oh, okay. So whatever you see there, we took out and replaced, and, and that and more when it when it installed. Well, I definitely saw that there were new shrubs planted and yeah. there were some ferns in the in the rain gardens, but all the other stuff was yeah. Was, you know, some of the stuff comes in, in little, you know, pods or whatever you want to call them, pots. You know, there were dozens of them. And they they just you 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 look at them and you say, you're gonna be kidding. I did how much for this stuff. Yeah, so I so I just don't know how to arrive at some type of a bond to know what's what's there, what's not there. That's why I wanted to look at the invoices at least. Yeah. I'll have some comfort that what the planting that's required was actually purchased. Yeah. I didn't do this, he did. You know, I, I, 
I'm not the expert in that. And I asked him to prepare a document that showed what we have to plant in the spring and the approximate cost of those items. That's this. That's this. So it's not stamped. It does indicate at the top that it was compiled by him, by a, you know, and he's a licensed landscape architect. He's not going to just lie on a list to the board whether or not his stamps on it. And we'll certainly get you this. You know, I'd be comfortable with a vote that was contingent on receiving that stamp letter that you suggested. <clears throat> So, you know, I think that's certainly reasonable uh, and they'll be able to attest as to what went in. And, you know, Madam Chair, I certainly hear you in terms of the bus route. You know, I was out there earlier today. It seems pretty clear to me that the drainage is coming off the road onto the property into the rain gardens, not the other way. And I mean, it's gotta be three feet. I mean, you'd have to have three feet of, of water collecting in those rain gardens before could possibly spill onto the street. And again, that hasn't happened since this place has been constructed. And it's no more likely to happen if it's occupied. It's really a matter of, you know, the, the financial impact to my client of, of having to keep it vacant and the public safety impact of having this big, long vacant building. When I pulled in there earlier, there was just a car hanging out there that took off as soon as I pulled in while I was waiting for Mike. So, you know, I think when it comes to the, the bylaw and what it says about bonding, it's if it's not going to impact public safety or health. And I think clearly nothing that we've discussed tonight, whether it's the drainage calculations or the landscaping is gonna impact public health or safety, other than letting the building be occupied, I think is gonna be a benefit to public health and safety instead of having this big um, vacant building. Um, and absolutely we would agree to, uh, to having the vote contingent upon receiving a stamp letter from the landscape architect. And in terms of the amount of the bond, you know, we're hoping this is a matter of a few months and then we'll be back. And of course, it should include, if someone had referenced, it should include uh, inspection by Fuss and O'Neill after the fact to confirm that it's in there. Um, and I, I don't want to spend Mike's money, but I, I think they'd rather they'd rather have a bond that perhaps overestimates then no bond that prevents them from occupying. So I, I think we're here to try to come to a, a reasonable figure on that. Mr. Miller. Yeah, Madam Chair. Um, just from my perspective, I, and I, I was kind of at the point last time, but then there was a laundry list of things that popped up beyond the rain garden. I mean, whether the building's occupied or not, the runoff from the water, there's no change I, in my opinion, from what's going to happen if the building is occupied or not. Um, from, I, I drive by there a lot, going to 485, uh, you know, and just going to to hide out in the back and, you know, do stuff. But I could totally see that happening. It's very remote. No one would go back there. I, I'd be in favor of working with. You know, figuring out these final pieces that need to get tied up, uh, coming up with an amount, um, and you know, going forward, um, so that it could be occupied. It would be, you know, most, quote looking abandoned um, from my perspective. And again, it's because the whether it's occupied or not, it doesn't change the, the runoff that's going to happen on the roof, and it's been there for. Like you said, uh, over a year, or almost two years. I think it, it, um, you know, that I totally agree too. Knowing it's a bus route, that's one of the big concerns, and the, the Murphy Girl accident that happened there many years ago. Um, I guess all of us old timers remember that. Um, so, um, so it's, I am concerned about um, the traffic pattern there, but I think that's remedied. To, there hasn't been any complaints or I haven't heard anything about accidents there. Um, 
while the building has been there. So I, I'd be in favor of moving forward with the surety bond encompassing both the, the plants, the rain garden, and uh, I don't I don't know if we have to hold them to the the sign, but you know I think that'll fall under under the building inspector if it's put in the wrong spot. But from the, those two those two aspects of what I'd be most concerned about. So the question is how do we um, come up with a bond figure? So I think if uh, I mean if they can provide uh, if it was suggested I don't know who that there was a signed letter from the landscape architect. This is what was put in, and if they can provide receipts, um, then yeah. I mean, if we're gonna uh, uh, assume it would be increased a bit anyhow for the main garden, that would convert. Yeah. Well, and the thing there are a couple of missing things here that I. Yeah, and it, the one of the missing one though, it's under the, it says completed for spec. I think you just missed the replacement planning column saying completed. I'm guessing. I think it's a small Bayberry one you're talking about in Rain Garden 2. Yeah, but then there's this one here, right? It's blank. Oh, yeah. It says completed for spec, but it doesn't say completed in the replacement plan. Uh, so, yeah, it has to be cleaned up a little bit. But I think once that happens and we get some receipts, we can. I'd be comfortable um, saying, you know, yeah, with you and the town planner, finding a agreed upon amount with the applicant um, based off that, and whatever we think if the rain garden has to be adjusted or whatever. Not an engineer. Can I throw something out just as a suggestion? Sure. I think that the total cost of <clears throat> the plantings. On the estimate um, that might be previously provided was something on the order of eleven or twelve thousand dollars. So, so the, the plan at the bottom of the of this list was paid by Steve Cosmos to risk about ninety three hundred, and then I think it was twenty six hundred or twenty eight hundred right. for the landscaper to install them for labor. for labor. So that comes to something around twelve thousand dollars. What if? We just set the bond tonight at twenty-five thousand dollars. It's obviously more than sufficient to make up the cost of a few hollies or whatever that might have been missed. You know, plus in O'Neill's time, um, we'd rather just, if the board's amenable, just have a vote, even though we're obviously over bonding, just so that we can move forward. We'll do that. We know that the money will be coming back. Hopefully in a few months. So that would be my suggestion. I'll just turn off the AC. It's not going. Of course. Not walking out. And that twenty-five thousand, say, would already include a twenty percent contingency and an eight point four percent inflation, or would it be yes. if the board yeah. agrees to that amount, then we would still add a twenty percent and an eight point four percent inflation? I mean, my thought, frankly, was that that. You know, adding twenty percent would bring you somewhere on the order of fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars, and we're adding ten thousand on top of that. So so that would be my thought. And you know. then one other question I had is: um, Is there a way to draft the? And when you say it's a, a surety bond, that's just a written agreement with like an insurance policy, like a performance bond, or is that a cash bond? So uh, I know this isn't a subdivision, but we'd be willing to pick one of those three types, you know, either a cash bond um, or uh, um, an actual bond or so we, securities. Wait, um, how do you write into that bond as a contingency that if the drainage failed to meet the intent of the approved plan? When Foster O'Neill's comments are responded to for the entire system that the drainage and pumpkin, how do you write that into the bond that protects the town? Mm -hmm. That um, if it isn't doesn't work, it gets remedied. Yeah. So there's going to be a surety agreement. 
and then there'll be an actual surety. And the surety agreement is going to be a contract between the developer and the town and the town that will say um, the developer by thus and such a date is going to provide um, complete drainage calculations upon review. If Huston O'Neill determines that additional work is necessary, Huston O'Neill will provide a cost estimate and the surety will be increased to um, to, meet that to meet that amount. And, and again, you know, I'm happy to draft it, but I assume and, and Jay agreed that he would take the first cut at it because I assume the board would prefer that. So, um, so he'd be drafting it obviously to protect the town. And then what protects the town that it, it does not meet the standard for stormwater management as required that it eventually gets built that way. So say the worst case is it, you know, <laughs> design fail, the, the, the new way it was built doesn't meet the standard that's required, right? So there is a surety, mm -hmm. an assurity agreement. How do you cover the cost of updating the drainage system if it does not meet the required means? So that's what the, that's what the surety agreement would say that that cost, so Fuss and O'Neill is gonna do a review of the drainage calculations. If they determine something needs to be done, then the engineers are gonna to get together, figure out what the right fix is, come up with a, a cost that they can agree upon, and then the bond will be increased to cover that cost. And there's a language that then says, even though you have a bond, they're still liable to build it. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. I that's, a question. that's an enforcement. Okay. I yes, just, Mr. Stein. Yeah. It, so we're talking about a temporary certificate of occupancy, correct? Right. Okay. So what's the time constraint on the temporary certificate of occupancy? Uh, yeah. It's my understanding that the building inspector commissioner um, puts those up for 30 days and then they get renewed. Well, so it's gonna it's so each C of O is good for in 30 day increments and then they they have to basically re certify it, right? No, I think they just get extended. Like if they haven't met the requirement, the building commissioner has the I believe has the authority to extend it another 30 days. So I mean I'm just trying to address your concern, Karina, that if, if for some reason the drainage didn't work out then at some point there would be no extension on the certificate of occupancy where they would lose the 25,000 and have no certificate of occupancy. Yeah, awesome. I, was, I was just thinking more of the case. So I just wanted to make that, it a time. Like yeah. that to me, yeah. that to me seems like enough of an incentive for us to move forward and close this out. Not my decision, but I don't think I don't think I'm Yeah. So, we'll let the motion. All right. I got to have to make a legal language. I'm going to have to. So, I make a motion that the planning board approve a temporary occupancy permit. Well, we would sign well, off. We'll okay. sign off. Okay. That's why I said I'm going to attempt it. So you, you help, help me with this. We sign off on temporary. Right. Right. Recommend to the yes. uh, building. building commissioner to provide a temporary uh, occupancy permit to 154, 156 North Bar Road. Um, uh, with an assurity agreement uh, that is uh, reviewed by the chair. So you're going to see the invoices and everything. And, um, and acceptable to town council. And sec yeah, acceptable and town and council. Uh, not, not the whole board. No, it's acceptable to town council. And the chair. Not to exceed. Can I say that? Not to exceed what you say, 20, 25. 25. 
for the applicant's, applicant's request, request, not twenty-five thousand. Not to exceed. Should you can just say well, you know. the amount is twenty-five thousand. That's what's yeah. agreed on. Okay. Make it twenty-five thousand. Okay. I didn't. I want to make sure. I was. I appreciate it. I didn't come up with that number. Is what I'm trying to say. Like a, a, the amount of twenty-five thousand proposed by the applicant. Second. Very good. There's a motion and a second. We have a second. I just want to make one other note. The wildflower seed mix is in on this list. I'll remind you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All in favor, Latrell, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Demiri, yes. Very good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. No. That that is in place. Yeah. I just want to make sure that's clear. Side on one. Side on one. What? So just just for my own deep brain here, how how long do you think it's going to take to get maturity and all this? Probably a month. Really? That long? I mean, I'll work with Jay to try to get the agreement in place. As, as soon as possible, and then so, so it, it could well be less. I mean, I assume you're babes that you are so you to just post the yeah. yeah, the point of me saying that just work with the chair was that you didn't have to wait for another meeting. No, so I appreciate I'll, that. I'll hope yeah. Is that you can get the receipts and everything and yeah. make it happen yeah. faster? That that was why I worried about that. Thank you so much. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Be nice Thank to have tenants. Thank you. Yes. Okay, the next item on the agenda, another discussion item, is the National Grid FY24 Annual Vegetation Management Plan. Thank you. 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 A few weeks ago, we received um, an email from the town administrator, Mark Purple, informing us that National Grid had provided him with um, fiscal year 24 um, annual vegetation management plan, which, as you recall, um, it was agreed to that planning board would have a discussion of this at a public meeting to determine if they had any questions or not or comments, and if they did, they would provide them back to Mark Purple. Um, uh, I believe he's the one who ultimately signed off on yeah. the um, agreement in the annual management. So we were provided with um, maps, street maps, and then also um, kind of uh, locus of the cross country and roadway areas where they're going to do their annual maintenance. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to look at the specifics of it, so if you looked at this yourself, um, you'd be familiar where it is. Colleen, maybe you know it. Do you know where your vacation are yet? Have you had a chance? Yeah, to they provided in the actual um, agreement. It had listed all the things. Yeah. <laughs> we don't even need to. Yeah. 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 So what was provided is the uh, vegetation management plan approval for fiscal year 24, which is April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2024. Um, and again, um, we have a document that Mark Purple will sign. And in here, it listed um, trees. And I believe this was provided in a packet on the, um, next to the agenda on the town website. So that the public can review this as well, so they have an opportunity to do that. Um, do you want me to list some of the streets? Or just the referral to this is on the website. Yeah. 
So again, this information is on, on the planning board website under agenda for the packet for the uh, you can see the maps, you can see the agreement, and they also provided um, a copy of their um, Massachusetts distribution line clearance specification uh, that are dated from 2019, but the specification hasn't changed. These were actually yeah, these the same ones that were reviewed in the fiscal in the prior years of vegetation management plan. And that's so if you remember from August. Yeah, when they came in here. Mm -hmm. came in here. When they came in here, and then we had the joint meeting with the select board that we reviewed the vegetation management plan, and we asked that the streets be on it, you know, yeah. for the boys. So they, so they did. It's exactly like the one that we just. We, do we know the status of the ones they already said they wanted to take out? Oh, um. Yeah. So there's one on Lattice Squamish that's still waiting. It's massive. And oh, then there's yeah. I, I know from the last storm, my wife was on the uh, the blog. And someone was upset on Gilmore Road because a tree came down that was, I think, on the list. But is this the list for National Grid or the list that was the DPW 2022 with Harvest with and Resident College? So the so the trees. Um, that were at the hearing that we agreed to have the move that's where it started. And on the DPW website, and I couldn't find it. Right starting there. or started? I think started. Yeah, I think they were at Gilmore today, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I just felt bad for that. Yeah. Um, I think he had to call someone privately because it was on a walk. Well, right. Yeah. So, I, so that work is starting and the uh, contract is around. Right? Oh, good. Yes, and we actually have to go where I'm going to do somewhere. Here it is. Uh, so, an uh, email went out from Chris Lee where the tree board designate um, January 5th. And I think we provided that to and yeah, yeah, I think it's on the draft in the draft. Okay, yes. And it said um this was to um my purple. We had three full days of crane work scheduled over the next two weeks. We will begin on Monday, January 9th on Stub Toll Lane, removing the large oak tree that is deemed a safety issue. Since most of these trees on the list are on busy roads, there will be a significant impact on traffic. I plan to email uh, my couple ahead of time to get updates for Twitter, and we will use constant contact update residents to impacted streets through the office. I'm in contact with the schools about bus schedules and their routes, since streets may need to be shut down and detoured for this roadside work to occur. I will send out an update after this first batch is done with the updated list showing the removal. The DPW will also be taking down some of the smaller trees to stretch the funds during this time. I'd encourage any resident with questions about where a specific tree is on the list to be directed to reach out to the office, and I will be more than happy to update them best as I can, just to preliminary. So, um, again, this was um, provided by Chris Leroy, January 5th. So they're starting work today. Great, thank you. All right. And just to be clear, there's the National Grid of Vegetation. Right, right. And then there's the one that we had the consolidated meeting with the select board because they were on the meeting road. Right. I just hadn't seen much happen in general. So I'm wondering, you know, it's great that they're getting a new list to us for 2024, but I hadn't seen anything happen before we already approved. Yeah. So I think Grid actually did or have already started their work from last year's vegetation plan. And that's like mowing. In uh, shrub removal, in any trees eight inches or less, anything greater than eight inches that's not an imminent hazard would have to come, uh, would have to have a hearing. Follow the regular. Process. Yeah, I, I noticed this is a list of about 30 or so streets, and I don't remember, I'm sure last year was probably about the same. So I think this is the maintenance that we were hoping to get into where every year they've got. 
30 or 40 so streets so that every couple of years they'll be visiting your street unless there's other things that have specific. to happen. Specific. For emergency. Yeah, and on the letter that they did send, um, they did say that there are no, uh, and there's no hazard tree removal work planned. And just reiteration of what we had requested that they honored that hazard tree removals will be handled through public hearing. Like you just said, maybe. Yeah. It's good to be in this maintenance mode moving forward. Yeah, and we asked them to get the um, their plan to us prior to December 31st, which is the other thing of the month. So yeah. Moving moving forward. Once it's fixed. Mr. Stein, any comments? Sorry about that. None here. Thank you. Thank you. So do we need to um, take a vote to send our approval to the select board? Or I would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I motion we approve the National Grid Fiscal Year 24 Annual Vegetation Management Plan. And second. And a second. Any more discussion? All in favor, with crown, yes. Mills, yes. Stein, yes. Amiria, yes. Very good. And the next item on the agenda is a discussion item in the TA community. So, um, this is something that um, Mimi and Colleen are spearheading. Um, so, if you want me to take Sure. So um, as you will recall, the select board had approved a um, MBTA communities action plan to keep us in compliance with the MBTA communities um, statute through 1231-2024. And we received comment from Shotzi, which we incorporated in, in that plan and accepted there. Um, we, uh, Pauline had also sent the action plan to the select board uh, looking for them to comment. And um, they have not commented yet, but they asked that Colleen and I attend their uh, January 17th meeting. And then uh, we'll bring back any comment they have on that action plan to our meeting on the 23rd. And then Get final approval and send it off to the state prior to the in the thirty first. Sounds good. Is that it? Looks like covered off. Yep. <laughs> yep. And then there was um, an update on the grant that started. You started a meeting with the oh yeah with the potential with the engineer that was assigned. Yeah. Um, Still very keen about beginning phase. So I did. Uh, I did reach out to um, KDMC who was from um, NHP, and she said that they will negotiate the scope of work and the contract with Ola, and then we'll get a letter after that of um, award. And if they have an issue with the uh, scope of work, I'll send it back to us to approve it. Before the nation. Yeah. So what happens is that Bowler Engineering has assigned one of the three qualified firms to help the community with um this MTA community. Yeah, just every, yeah, the 3A um, requirement. Yeah, they were they were selected for South Carl along with I think four or five other towns um, because they're local to the region and they want to apply and qualify. So they work out a contract with that basket. And then they're going to give us a scope at some point. So we know what Yeah, there's just no contract yet. There's no scope yet. Right. yet. Um, we'll have to get back and back with them over the, the scope um, before they submit it, I would assume. Yeah. Um, and then they'll enter into a contract at that point. And the billing will go between those two. Yeah. And then they'll send an official award letter of the grant. So the, even though they said the grants were awarded, they have to officially do this before they officially send the letter that says you got it, and then they stop. Yeah. 
So then the contract and then the then they know better we have how far they'll take us into um, with the twenty thousand dollars that was we're already looking with more. Yep. And also Shopsy is very interested in participating and being involved in especially uh with the country for the uh property overall the classroom. Anything else on that? Sounds good. Thank nope. you. Okay. The next item on the agenda is a discussion item St. Mark Street relocation from Wall Trees Public Way. Don't need to update this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, Mr. Maria did a, a draft on the issues with the St. Mark's uh, Street located on um, the stone wall, the trees that were removed. Um, in the meantime, uh, the select board chair reached out to me and Karina to meet with her and Mark and uh, select board member Lisa Brockio to discuss a path forward on getting the issues um, resolved. We're supposed to meet on Wednesday. So it would be my recommendation to hold on, hold off on any action on this pending the outcome of that meeting, if that's okay with the board. I'm in favor. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Doing that. My pleasure. But I will have this with me when I meet with them to make sure I, we don't miss anything. That's the 12, 21, 22. The next item on the agenda is a discussion item. Um, tree protection bylaw and tree policy. Don't want to take this one. Yes, you want to hand me. <laughs> You're extremely actionable. Um, so the first update since the last time I reached out to the town planner in Provincetown because I pulled most of this bylaw from the town of Provincetown. And coincidentally, the town planner of Provincetown used to live in Southboro and was on the Open Space Preservation Commission. Wow. That's really Small world. So, yeah, I have to know him. Oh, oh yeah. He was, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I reached out to him to find out, you know, how that bylaw is working in Provincetown, how the planning board works with the tree warden. Their tree warden is their DPW supervisor, who's a huge tree preservation. I guess. Um, but he said it's been working very well. And there's very good collaboration between the two of them. They have had no no issues, nothing that he would want to change. Or, so that was some good feedback. Um, and then and then um, since town meeting, I've made some changes on this bylaw. I removed the requirement of a permit for work within the drip line. Um, I added the amendments that we had voted on prior to town meeting um, that we didn't get before the warrant printed, but we had agreed with those, the reference to the um, utility approved annual plan being exempt from hearings. Um, and on this particular, um, so maybe we take out the drip plan now. It's really it's only the trees that actually are in the public way. Yeah. And it so this it follows almost except for definitions give more meat than what's in uh, chapter eighty seven. 
but everything else pretty much follows exactly Mass State law. So what if it's forty percent in the public way and sixty percent on private property? Well, the rule is if it's in if it's in the right of way at all, town tree. The yeah, trunk. 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 The trunk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the right of way. If it's on the, in the right of way at all. Right. Trunk. Not yeah. a root. The trunk. The trunk. The yeah. 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 Okay. And doesn't the definition define a certain? No, that, that's not what the right of way. That's well, that's just the size. The but if the trunk, no matter where it is, down in the floor, it's going to be around the block, where it's at grade, at, you know, at ground surface. Yeah. That's on town right of way. Okay. Uh, uh, part of its practice, you know, because <laughs> who knows what's going to get thrown at us. When, uh, oh, I know. Oh, I know. Uh, so uh, I'm not trying to be flip or anything. So the other thing, and I also added um, invasive species to the reasons to remove a tree, dead, disease, uh, interfere with structures or utilities. I also added in, uh, species that are invasive to mass people. And under tree replacement, this particular version, I moved out a lot of the specifics out of tree replacement and added it to the, the tree policy, which, um, Hopefully, the select board will accept the tree policy in their tree board. And so, the an accepted policy by the tree board and has the same strength as a bylaw. Well, the flow chart for um, public hearings for tree removal will be the same. This is flow chart. So uh, remember Lisa Braccio had developed this flow chart oh, yeah. like green and light green circles. So this this has more uh specifics based on like things that we went through in those first set of hearings on how things should be done. And, um will this replace that flow chart or is it in conjunction with that flow chart? Do you know? I'd have to look at both. I would think that it would replace it because the flow card chart is kind of general. Yeah, it was like and, an and this is more specific. Okay. So um my ask tonight is that the the board accepts these so I can send them to the select board for comment, hopefully before the end. Or it goes to print, so there are no amendments. <laughs> so <I'm over>. Second. <laughs> okay. Is there any discussion? No, just no. Let's, let's think of it. So that's to accept that so pre policy. The planning the, board accept that. the edits to the uh, bylaw in box. So Latrell, yes. Bells, yes. Stein, yes. Demiria, yes. Does I that, keep on waiting for a fifth yes. I know. <laughs> Does that need to be sent to um, the uh, uh, select board? Do they, like, have they don't have a picture. Again. No picture again. <laughs> Marnie on the beach. <laughs> oh. Marnie on the beach, the huge margarita. <laughs> do you want us to send that to them, or would you like to do that directly? The picture of Maureen? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll send it. That way you can make sure your edits are. You're going to send the draft tree bylaw? Yeah. And the tree promise. Yeah. And just to add a note to that, that um, the public hearing for three of the warrant articles, which is the tree protection bylaw. The scenic roads by one and a warrant article, and then the downtown district sign language added to the sign by law, which was missing. Um, those public hands are all opening at the next meeting. They've been advertised, they should be been published today. You have to check that in the next Monday, and then on the 23rd, we'll open the public hearing for those zoning amendments um, and just code amendments. Again, okay. some of them don't aren't required to, but we have them. So that's the next meeting. That's the 23rd mm -hmm. for those three. 
Yeah. And then con cons for he okay. said there were six, right? Could we still um are we we have to actually get those um con con foreign articles when we submit it to us in uh mock performance so that so that it's not efficient. It always has to go and it's somebody outside it has to go through the to planning in that process and then planning then over the public hearing. All right. And the next item is a discussion item, environmental controls. And um, I had spoken, Mr. Murray had submitted um, an amendment to site plan on this. And I spoke with her asking um, if we could postpone this until uh, all town meeting since we have four bylaw hearings already, and it would give us more time to get that. Yeah. I'm with okay. Unless someone else feels differently. We currently that works. Have... I'm in agreement. Okay. We currently have three attendees, no hands raised. All right. So off we go to planner's report. Okay. okay. Not too much. Um, I won't. So, uh, we already just discussed uh, conservation commission warrant articles. One will be um, updates to the stormwater and erosion control bylaw. Section 174-13.5. Um, there's some work still going on, whether that's going, some of it's going to be um, moved out of the fold or left uh, out of the zone. Or, I, I could be the female one I'm talking about. So there's two worn articles, stormwater and erosion control related, which we'll find out what that is. And then um, the section 174-8.9 WFP wetland and floodplain district. Um, um, initially, we thought uh, conservation thought they were in compliance. If they were with one part, and it turns out there's additional parts. So we're going to basically replace that section with the updated requirements um, that FEMA requires. Well, I know um, stormwater there and erosion, there was a concern because it was an appeal to the zoning board, which the zoning board knows a lot, but stormwater and erosion, I think, is one of them. So they didn't they want didn't want to appeal to the zoning board. So I had sent a list of the language that we used for the site plan when we changed that so it wouldn't be uh appealed to the zoning board, but board of competent jurisdiction. So right. I don't right. know if that will if that will work or if they want it out of the zoning Right, that's right. Because so the commission had agreed that like can we buy a lot of zoning board they have to change the appeal language. Exactly right. Um, and then, um, with the wetland floodplain district is required by FEMA for compliance with the national flood insurance policy update, which they're they help review and such. But that's being spearheaded by Melissa Danza. But I informed her that she needs a public hearing for those for zoning hearing. All right, then um, we already talked about the activity on the tree lists that starting yeah, the construction plan. Good. Um, I provided you in the drop box the email that you, the town council, had sent out an advisory early in December regarding um, a new opt in legislation for MGL Chapter 40Y uh, starter home zoning districts. Uh, so, if anyone's interested in that in public, they can always uh, give me a call. We'll put another copy of that. Um, Tennessee Gas. Um, I think that you and Colleen had sat, sat in on a meeting with Tennessee Gas um, because they were going to do trimming, uh, yes. maintenance. Um, so do you have anything? So, they, so first of all, uh, props to them. They wanted to meet with the town to let the town know ahead of time, you know, what was going on, what work they needed to do. And um, so we would all be informed. And it's the gas line is over on Pine Hill, and it, 
uh, is mostly in people's backyards. There's only a small piece that even crosses over any of the street. And they're not um, they're not required to comply with like the uh, right away tree bylaw. They're under yeah, considered a um, public necessity and also um, they don't like the location of the loan. And if they, you know, it's a safety factor. Oh, like yeah. exactly where the gas yeah. line is. So, they, so yeah. they'll be they'll be doing trimming because they send drones to make sure that nothing's going on on the gas line. So they need to tree, trim the trees so the drones can see what's going on. And so people aren't planting trees or they said they found excavators on top of the gas line. Which you is can't figure out where this is, where the drone just flying <laughs> perfectly in a wooded area, trim so a drone can fly yeah. right now. Okay. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. But um, so they, I guess they will put little notices on people's doorknobs who have the uh, right away in their backyards. So no, they're trimming. And that's starting at no sooner than the end of January. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah. They, they do the mowing more regularly. So there's nothing really falling out there. It's the trees that are kind of getting into it. So that, that was good, just getting information ahead of time. So when people call, you don't say, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, I had a really good meeting with Michael Weichan from South Hill Historic Society last week uh, to review where he sits with um, major site plan approval application, uh, which he is currently working on. Um, they are currently doing things under building permits there to preserve the structure itself. Uh, the roof, the um, foundation. Um, I sent you a picture that I think mm -hmm. Michael and the condition here. These indoors when they fall in the basement. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, that's the work they're doing there. See that, and also repairs and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're just repairing it's not going to be replacing it. So they'll continue trying to keep the property viable, not for a change of use at this point. Um, Are they still thinking of putting a kitchen in the basement or like I, I saw that in the paper. They're talking about having like a restaurant in the basement. I don't know, but um the, the draft plans were in uh, available. You can look at these four plans in there okay. and you, if you can decide from I just haven't had a chance to look through through them closely. I'll check if there's something. You're going to make that part of the restaurant or something. I think you're going to need a bigger subject. Right. right. Yeah. So, not, um, not our jurisdiction. I'm just. No, no. but I did talk thing. to him about that, that, you know, what they were doing for the use, just to make sure what you're doing, what you intend to do, what you're doing, 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 mention of the utilization of the Dover Amendment or the invoking of the Dover Amendment? Yes, so, that's the next thing. Yeah, at the earliest uh, opportunity, I think that we might want to request legal opinion on this because this is, to me, the most overused, um, you know, clause that's invoked in, in submissions by um certain institutions that shall remain nameless and i feel like it's been invoked in the past inappropriately so i you know we this is something that i would like to see curbed is the use of this because in my opinion the dover amendment is really intended as you know something out of absolute existential necessity by the entity that's using it and it's not intended to just circumvent process, procedures, bylaws, and, and codes at the whim of whatever institution chooses to invoke it. So the sooner that we can get legal opinion on that, the better, in my opinion. So I was waiting for this evening for this discussion to make sure the planning board was on board with, um, with the planning department submitting a legal opinion request to ask um, 
is the Dover Amendment applicable in this case? And also, um, if it is, what are what is the planning board's jurisdiction for site plan review? Are there any restrictions? Any that Dover Amendment is like have a use in any district, but you still have to have site plan review to make sure that it's fine. So also in Dover Amendment, isn't there a section on reasonable regulation? Yeah, that's what, that's what she means. Right. The site plan is. Yeah, so that would be site sure that plan, effect, wouldn't it? Because parking, other things. Mm -hmm. Those are reasonable. But some it's people reasonable. You have a different opinion of reasonable. <laughs> yeah. And so they, they may not want it to be planning or landscaping or drainage, but a lot of those things are a function of how the site functions safely and cleanly and Mm -hmm. yeah. policies and in character with wherever it's going. Can I ask, is there is there a procedure for a nonprofit to apply, formally apply for Dover Amendment, or do they just say we would like to apply the Dover Amendment? It's, it's basically for <clears throat> so in general, the Dover Amendment is based, it's basically for um, protection for educational uses. Uh, related uses, um, maybe I think, I think that's not all I mean. I think you have to, whatever cultural or biblical, yes, black yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. you know, um, it's a big section in NGL and there's a lot of discussion. But I think okay. when I did a quick Wikipedia um, check, the use has to be a dominant use yeah. for the property. Yes. Yes. So, so, the, so. The applicant should uh, demonstrate demonstrate that, that that one of the applicable uses under Dover is their dominant function, which means they would be part of their education. That's what's going to be in the end. And we'll get that legal opinion in to town council yeah. to get well, into this one for applicability and for. Jurisdiction. So yeah. I, I agree, a museum, but then the dominant use, what's the hours of the museum going to be? Well, that's what a reasonable regulation you can have to save the Oh, I mean, like, how often is it open currently back here? Like, if it's only open once a week or once a month, I mean, yeah. anyway. So then. But I, I do think that um, from looking at case law on Dover, that the uh, courts are pretty lenient on what uh, what is covered under Dover. Mm -hmm. like they've, they've upheld like stadium lighting as educational and on fields and all kinds of other things. So the churches will only have mass on Sunday. Uh, I'd argue that the doors open all the time. Most of these not all, not all churches. Yeah, you should. Sure. Yeah, I'm Catholic one thing. So um, we'll be putting in that legal opinion request, and we'll get you a copy of that when it goes in. So that you know that we put it in and what we were asking you to do. Yeah, it would be good to go into to the to know what what we plan and can do. Yeah. And if we have to ask um the Southern Historical Society anything regarding their applicability to a dope, we can already ask them as well about that information if they're required to do so or not. Look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, on another good note, um, I received an email from Justin DePetri regarding uh, 154 Turnpike Road and site non compliance that they're working, they are now um, directing their attention on to submitting applications for both the modification to the site plan and the tree removal on the scenic road application. Um, so um, that letter to the building commissioner was never submitted. At this time, and then lo and behold, this email came in, which I was very happy to see. So now we have to see, make sure they follow through and do that. And then if they don't within the next 
a uh, couple of weeks um, scheduled to meet with me because I offered that up that they should meet with me to get guidance on what I have to do. They don't, then we can rediscuss it. We can leave to call that one and you know the phone to build information again with a strong letter. Just stand out that way. So that that so that works out well because had we sent a letter to the building commissioner, she would have said they can't do anything about landscaping. <laughs> so he would have been in a holding pattern anyway. So that's it. All right. And that's all I have. Um, and we did minute. it. Meeting is January 23rd. Yes, it is. Yep. Motion to adjourn. Second. Anyone? Seconded. I have a motion and a second. Would we like to have a long discussion on this agenda item? <laughs> <laughs> I can apply. <laughs> All in favor, Latrell, yes. Bills, yes. Diane, yes. Tamiria, yes. Yay. This Yay. must be a record before no morning time here. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Thank you, Jackie. Have a good night. Thank you for the lunch for meeting. <laughs>